What's up guys, back with another video. Hope you really enjoyed my last one about the, uh, you know, the explanation of the all wheel drive and all the strengths and weaknesses of the drivetrain. Uh, as the title said, today we're gonna be talking about my billet angle gear case project that I've been working on for, I guess, close to a year now, but I've really been actually working on it for like the past two or three months, like a lot. Um, I started about a year ago, uh, just dissecting angle gears, doing a lot of research on how they fail, why they fail, um, component analysis, uh, getting, you know, the, getting all the measurements uh, internally all right and getting the gears meshing correctly. And just the past, I guess, two months, um, I finally designed a really strong case that I've been doing a lot of finite and element, element analysis on. Um, and I've done a whole bunch of math, um, basically all the gear tooth force math, all of the math on the bearings. Uh, and then I basically used all of that in my finite, finite element analysis simulation to basically help me design this case to be as strong as I, as it possibly can be. And I've basically been working around the constraints of, I want the case to be able to handle 1000 newton meters of engine torque in all the gears um, with 100% of the torque going to the rear, with the possibility of 100% of the torque going to the rear. And like I explained in my last video, you know, in the first two gears, the gear, you know, the torque can get pretty crazy. You can get up to 13,000 newton meters of torque going into that angle gear from you know, 1,000 newton meters of engine torque. So let's get to it. I can't wait to show this case. Uh, we're gonna start with doing a small little analysis on why the stock unit fails. Um, you know, basically go over the different bearing forces, um, talk about how weak the case is, and then we'll dive into what my case is, what it looks like, and uh, some of the things that I've done to it, and also some things that I plan on doing in the next week before I get it off to machining. So without further ado, let's get to it. So before we take a look at the billet case, uh, that I've designed. We're going to take a look at the stock case. Uh, we can basically see it here. It's a two-part case, same thing as mine, except instead, um, basically they split their case on a 45 degree angle. Uh, mine split on a 90 like this. But we can see we have the inner uh, ring gear bearing bore. We have the inner pinion. We have the outer pinion bearing bore, and we also have some splash lubrication channels here. So basically the gear is spinning this way, but that flings oil up through this channel. That goes through here and into basically here. Uh, that lubricates this whole area. And then there's basically another one here to drain back. Um, but this is another big reason why these are so weak is because of these hollow channels. These hollow channels just cause this entire area to be so weak. Um, and we also have the uh, bearing crew load adjustment nut that kind of goes in there. I'm basically going to be reusing this. I'm not reusing this piece because this is a weak cast piece. These actually, there's actually a lot of bearing force on this race in here. Well, actually, on the race in here, that threads into there. And it'll actually cause this whole piece to break as well. So this whole case is just no no good. Needed a complete ground up redesign. Um, but, you know, still use all the same internal measurements and everything. But you can just see how thin this area is. Like, there's really nothing here. You got all this hollowness here. You got hollow here hollowness here just this whole area is just so hollow and they have some ribbing here to try and help support it but just it wasn't enough and it's just such a weak porous casting you can it, when these pop off you can just see how grainy the casting and it's just it's not a very good design for handling anything more than stock power or well stock torque or even stock torque at all so let's get into my design and we'll start looking at my design and see how i design things I also want to explain where the actual bearing forces are real quick. So when the gear is rotating, uh, I guess from this direction clockwise and the car is going forward, you have a force on the four uh, bearing bores as well as a thrust, as well as two thrust forces on each of the, uh, um, you know, pinion and ring gear. So basically on the inner pinion, the force is going up. So it's trying to push the top of this case up and off. And on the outer pinion, you have the force going down, so it's trying to rip this piece out, or rip that piece down. And you also have a thrust force on this surface right here, going in. 
so the pinion's actually trying to be pulled in to the case. Um, on the ring gear, we have uh, both forces on the uh, bearing bores are going down, and that's why a lot of times, uh, at least on some fa failures, you'll see this whole piece kind of blow off from the rest of the case. And then we also have a thrust force as well, and that's going that way, but it's very, it's a very small thrust force here. It's about one third the thrust force on uh, the outer pinion and the, um, the radial load on this is about one half of the radial load on this. So all the load is basically on this inner pinion and this outer uh, ring gear uh, bearing bores. So this is the prototype of my billet angle gear that I plan on getting machined pretty soon. Um, this is the full 3D printed prototype. Uh, I'll be showing some some other stuff in CAD, um, some other you know things that I'm going to be adding on to this, some some small things. But yeah, I've been freaking chugging away on this thing for two months now, literally probably four to five hours a day every day for the past you know two months just working on getting this thing designed and getting it you know working in the car getting it fitting in the car and all that and i'm really really happy with how it came out um i've been working on a ton of different designs i originally tried like a split case design uh, where there were two tops on two halves on the top and bottom and i eventually settled on this uh, single piece design so let's just start going over some of the features of it so as you can see it actually internally uses the same stock gears it used the same uh, ring gear preload adjusting nut um, it used the same you know companion flange the same pinion it uses all the stock bearings all the stock seals seal there and the seal in here and um, basically this is only bolted, the flange and the main case are only bolted together right now because it's easier to 3D print it that way. Um, when this is actually machined out of uh, aluminum 7075, all these bolt holes will be gone. And this and this are going to be one solid piece. Now we also have this outer piece right here. Um, this is kind of like the cap, basically for the ring gear that has the ring gear preload adjusting nut and it's gonna be held together with a bunch of ARP M8 by 15 bolts, uh, two M6s here. And you can see I only have a couple in right now because I mean, it's just a prototype. I'm not gonna put all the bolts in. Um, and I also have two 10 millimeter dowel pins right here that are actually uh, used for alignment. And I'm thinking about adding another dowel pin here because there's nothing really in this area um, or maybe another bolt or two. The issue, and we'll see this when we put it in the car, is this is very, very close to the engine block. Um, but let me go ahead and pull this this uh, this apart real quick, and I'll show you the insides and how it's all the stock gears and everything. And I mean, you can just see this thing spins great. Um, I was able to check the backlash. It's in spec, uh, five thousandths of an inch. Um, so I know all my measurements are really good. I checked the gear. Uh, tooth contact pattern and everything looks really good there um, but let's pop this open and I'll show you guys basically you know all the stuff inside it's pretty pretty uh pretty stock inside so here we have the units assembled as you can see I'm using the stock Volvo gears and that's what I plan on using at least in the beginning uh, if you ever held one of these gear sets before they are not lightweight at all they seem very very heavy duty um, I mean this is a, a big big sucker I mean it's basically the same as the rear end uh, gear set. We got the pinion in there. Again, looks like a pretty heavy duty gear. Uh, we got all the stock bearing sizes for both the pinion, inner pinion, outer pinions behind this seal over here. You see we got all stock seals. Basically just reusing all the stock stuff but putting it in a very stronger uh, aluminum 7075 T6 case that is going to be rated for much more uh, torque than the stock case and going to be able to take much larger bearing loads. Um, I don't see a point in redesigning the gears yet at least. Um, I want to see what these stock gears can do and I think the best thing to start with is the case because we know that's the weakest part because the case is always basically break. Um, but let's put this in real quick. Hold this so you can see that the gear, the ring gear slides in there like that. Um, it's kind of similar to the OEM design, uh, but instead of being cut, you know, on a 45, it's basically cut on a 90. 
So our gears are in there. You can see they spin nice and, and well. We got good tooth uh, contact. We got good backlash. You know, I measured all this stuff already. Probably hear that. Um, and then basically what happens is this case cover goes on like that. Dow pins go in and then we put our bolts in and then basically, you know, torque this cap down to set the preload. And then we would also put the companion flange on and torque that down to set the preload on the uh, pinion bearings. But I'm gonna go ahead and uh, throw this in the car and I'll show you guys how it all fits up. Um, everything fits pretty nicely. See, we've got a little bit of damage here. I've been using this case for some time, for quite some time now for uh, development. But um, yeah, um, I also wanna add a couple more features to this um, that I'll show in CAD, but basically I'm adding an external oiling port here for lubricating the pinion and also a uh, drain port here for um, either draining or filling the case or um, you know for the external lubrication system that I plan on using. But let's get this cover bolt back on and I'll throw this thing in the car and I'll show you guys what it looks like. So yeah, the, uh, the case basically kind of needs to be installed with the engine in the car. So basically just angle it up like this. It's probably gonna be a lot heavier when it's actually made out of aluminum. But that's later problems. And get this lined up. Come on. There we go. And I'm gonna go get some bolts. So because of how thick this flange is here, I'm actually gonna get um, studs um, because I can't actually fit longer bolts in between the case and the flange. So studs are gonna allow me to do that and probably also be a little bit stronger. Let's see, we got these bolts go right in, no problem. That one threaded in by hand. You know, they only thread in a couple millimeters, but that's okay for, uh, you know, just doing some test fit and stuff. And then we got this one down here, but it clears a lot of the stuff and I'll show you guys more in depth in a minute. Let me get this folded up. Okay. So yeah, it actually fits really well. Um, you can see some of the really tight spots, like right here was a big, um, you know, I had to do a lot of design around this spot here, making it fit there, while also making it really strong. Um, if we look this way, we can see right in the transmission tunnel, or right in the drive shaft exhaust tunnel, um, we got full clearance of the stock drain uh, lines. Um, clearance around all of here, you can see it clears the block and everything. Right, it's not hitting up against the block. This area is really, really tight right here, but we got room there. See if I can get a better, here's the oil drain. You can see we got full, full clearance. Yep, right there. Got really good clearance up and all around here. It does actually fit with the stock down pipe over there, just barely. It barely touches the top of here, but that's okay because I don't think anyone buying this, assuming I do sell these, is going to be using the stock down pipe that goes this way. And I know certainly I won't be. I'm probably going to be using down pipe that goes this way and tries to sneak its way through here or something. But we got a lot of clearance everywhere, really. It fits really well. Um, you know, the transmission is in, in park right now, so I can't spin this, but it does spin. And I'm just really happy with fitment. It, it really took a lot of time to get this thing to fit right. Um, and we'll talk about why later when I show some of the CAD stuff and FEA stuff, why this flange has to be so thick. But here you can kind of see there's not really a lot of space between here. So you can't really get a long enough bolt in there that'll go all the way through the flange and 25 millimeters into the transmission. So I'm just gonna use studs instead, and that's probably gonna help with actually getting the thing on 
because it's gonna be freaking heavy. So it's probably gonna be nice to get it on some studs before I have to play with trying to get in the, uh, trying to get the collar sleeve lined up uh, like you just saw, you know, earlier. But yeah, really happy with the fitment. Here's a quick comparison of my case to the stock case. You can see like bounding box wise, they're pretty much exactly the same size. They come out the same in the front. They're the same in the back. Uh, obviously my flange is a lot thicker because it has to handle a lot more torque. I have a ton of more meat around the pinion area, a ton more meat around here, a ton more meat on the cap for the uh, bearing preload nut because there's a lot of force on this bearing over here. And I think it was a really good exercise for making it work with all the stock stuff because that should make it a lot easier for me to build a downpipe for this thing because, you know, it's gonna be hard to root something through here. I think I can actually chop off. There's a piece under here that you can actually remove to like free up a lot of area. There's like this little chunk right here. It's a piece of metal here that's welded and you can cut out. Um, everything is the same in my T5R, except this heat shielding is a little bit different. I think on the front wheel drive models, it's quite a bit thicker because you don't need to run the prop shaft through this thing. You can see the prop shaft runs through here. So I'll have to pull that heat shielding out, maybe redo it with something else or buy a new set of the all wheel drive stuff or move this heat shielding over to that car. But we'll make the downpipe fit. It's gonna be, it's not gonna be easy getting three and a half inch downpipe in here, but I mean, we'll just have to do a lot of pie cuts, but we'll make it fit. So here is one of my first designs, probably did this, well, I started on a split case design, I guess probably like seven or eight months ago. And I also worked on it a couple months ago for switching to a, uh, you know, a single case design. Basically my intentions for this split case design or that it was going to be a lot easier to manufacture because basically I could machine this bottom piece, I could machine this top piece, and then basically bolt the two together with a very large M10 bolts. Basically, I was going to use or M12 bolts. Basically, I was going to use the Volvo uh, main bearing bolts or the Volvo head bolts that are used in the white block engines, um, and that that would give it an incredible rigidity and strength. Uh, but I quickly learned that this really wasn't feasible. Um, you know, like price-wise to get a machine this way and it wasn't going to be as cheap as I thought it would be because basically in order to get these bearing bores here to within the thousandths of an inch tolerance the case was going to have to be bolted together torqued down and then these bearing bores would have to be machined as a final step and basically at that point I was like well why even create a two-piece design anymore that it, it you know when I can just do a one-piece design and and do all the machining in one shot instead of having to clamp stuff together and try and do all the final boring and everything. But this was really beneficial design for just allowing me to get all of the gear tooth meshing all perfectly and get all of the measurements between the ring gear and the pin gear, pinion gear all perfect and to get all of the bearing races perfect. Because basically with the split case design, it allowed me to kind of see everything that was happening under the hood of the case um, without having to, you know, cut it open or see if everything was was fitting perfectly so i wouldn't really call this case too much of a waste of time but it definitely opened my eyes to other designs and allowed me to really get all the internal measurements absolutely spot on so this is my most recent design this is my uh, single piece case um, with this uh, plate right here so in this case we have our case which is this is going to be a one piece design as you can see those bolt holes from earlier are gone because this is all going to be machined as one big piece. Um, and this is definitely my best design so far and probably the design I'm going to get machined. It is incredibly strong. It's going to be machined out of a 7075T6 aluminum. And it, it not only looks really good, but the fitment in the car is very good. It's very strong from being one piece. And... It allows us to reuse some of the Volvo components, um, you know, in here and whatnot, that bearing preload adjustment nut. So we can turn on some of our threads. Wait for this load real quick. We can see we got our threads there for that, that bearing preload adjustment nut. We got our threads here. Um, if we hide this case plate, we got all of our threads here. And we also have, I'm still working on this a little bit, but basically I'm going to have an oil feed here, an external oil feed, just a little 5 PSI oil pump. 
something to just put a little bit of oil into uh i gotta i gotta fix this so those threads don't go all the way through but something to put a little bit of oil right before this bearing race right here and um basically after this seal right here so basically oil is going to be uh forced into here um there's also going to be i haven't really signed it yet but there's going to be a little channel here for the oil to actually drain back through um through the pinion and back into the case let me see if i can Turn that on real quick. I forget where I put it. Yeah, these guys. So let me unsuppress these. Give that a second. So I'm basically going to have some kind of channel like this so that after oil is injected into here and flows through the bearing in here, um, it can also flow in and lubricate the inner pinion bearing and then finally drain back into the case. And then we're also going to have a drain, you know, a drain plug here for the external lubricating system. Um, that way, basically, we can eliminate that that uh, forced or that splash lubrication that Volvo uses because it basically makes this area really, really weak. So let's hop into the simulation real quick. Here's a simulation I have currently run. Um, I'm not running it without any of the oil lubrication, but it doesn't change the, the safety factor at all. But as you can see, it's a pretty, pretty strong design. So right now I'm actually just simulating this case plate as bonded to this, to the main case, but I have simulated using bolts and everything and it, it is plenty strong and whatnot. But you can see basically how we have it set up or how I have it set up is, let me close these results. Uh, earlier we talked about where all the actual bearing loads are. So here you can see we have a bearing load set up, you know, here which is this right here. We have a bearing load set up here. This one's going up, this one's going down. We have our thrust right here, which is pushing against this lip here. And then we have our down bearing load here, a down bearing load here, and then also our thrust force there. Um, and then basically we just have this flange right here constrained um, as that will simulate it being bolted to the transmission. And well, we already had our results. Can we view the results? We're not going to recalculate them, but you know, it's this, this case is very strong. I'm using all numbers for if there were to be a thousand newton meters of engine torque in first gear with a hundred percent going to the rear. This is a pretty unrealistic, unrealistic situation. And still it had a 1.13 uh, safety factor, which is pretty good considering it still doesn't yield even at its absolute maximum worst case scenario that probably isn't ever going to be seen. I think first gear, the loads are going to be more realistic around the probably 700 newton meter range if i can even produce that much load in that low of a gear so i hope you guys enjoyed that video and seen a more in-depth look at the process i've been doing over the past couple months of designing my own billet angle gear case um and basically you know all the prototyping i've done all the test fitment i've done all the math i've done you know i've calculated all of the gear tooth forces all of the bearing load forces um, I've put all that in my finite element analysis model. I've done repetitive, you know, uh, reiterative design where I will test the FEA model, go back, make changes. And I've done that hundreds and hundreds of time, times. And I think I am very close to sending this thing off for manufacturing. And I'm actually going to be able to get it made out of 7075T6 for a very affordable price. Um, and hopefully if this case works out for me, I can maybe bring this to the market because I know there's a lot of people struggling with these angle gears and breaking them constantly. And if we can get a case that can hold up to the abuse of, you know, drag racing with radials on a, on a drag strip, I think that's going to be really big for the Volvo community. And, you know, we'll see what else we start breaking. We'll see what goes next. Um, maybe it's going to be the angle gear gears themselves or the prop shaft or the rear axles, you know. I have no idea, but I do also have plans for the collar sleeve um, to address that. I know I didn't really touch on that, but um, I have some ideas for using large M12 grub screws to kind of stop any board, uh, forward and backward slot that usually causes those to strip out. But we'll talk about that in another video. So until next one, guys.